Hi guys, welcome to Everything Blockchain. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through Beanstalk protocol. I've actually written an in-depth article on the same in case you're interested, you can give it a read. I'll be dropping the link in the description box for you. Okay, to begin with, Beanstalk is a decentralized credit-based with emphasis on credit-based stablecoin protocol. Now, we all know the popularity of stablecoins is surging owing to their ability to offer the best of both worlds. You have the privacy and speed of the cryptosphere and the stable valuation of traditional money. However, we cannot ignore the problem of centralization in the case of fiat backed coins and over collateralization in case of other coins like the commodity backed or crypto backed coins. Now, stablecoins have obviously found product market fit in DeFi, but the existing stable coins cannot scale to meet the demand. And why is that? Well, I just mentioned the answer is the collateral requirement. Lack of collateral has resulted in a huge shortage of stable coins in DeFi compared to their demand. Basic economic tells us that when you have a shortage of supply, you get a higher price. And this higher price actually shows up in the borrowing and lending costs, which are now almost 10% and rising. Imagine a scenario where an algorithmic stablecoin maintains price stability through a credit-based model as opposed to the existing collateral-based model. This is where Beanstalk comes into play. So Beanstalk is decentralized, collateral-free, and credit-based. Its design is actually inspired by projects like ESD and Basis Cash. However, it innovates on several aspects to provide users with a working algorithmic stablecoin that prioritizes decentralization with a novel pet mechanism. But before I get into the specifics, I'm actually going to briefly describe some terms that form an integral part of the protocol. The first one being beans. So beans are the protocol's collateral free credit based algorithmic stablecoins. So one bean essentially equals one USD. Stock is the yield generating governance token. This may sound like a lot at the moment, but don't worry, we'll be covering this in detail. That's what today's video is about. So hopefully after this video, you'll have a decent understanding of what the protocol is. Seeds are like vested stock. I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Now, season is native to Beanstalk and it's actually their timekeeping mechanism. You also have feel, which is the decentralized credit facility. You have soil. That is the willingness of uh, the protocol to take on debt. Weather is the interest rate for sowing beans in soil. Pods are the debt asset of Beanstalk. And I think that's it for now. We'll cover more terms as and when I explain more about the protocol. Okay, guys, we're now going to go through the working of the protocol. And for that, I just want you to understand a couple of things. So Beanstalk issues three ERC-20 standard tokens. You have the Beans, that's the algorithmic stablecoin of the protocol. You have Stock, the yield governance token, and you have Seeds, which is vested stock. Now Beanstalk relies on three interconnected parts, each of which I'm going to explain now. The first one being a decentralized price oracle. So Beanstalk uses two Uniswap liquidity pools. These are USDC ETH and bean and ETH to create this price oracle. When the ratio of the two pools are identical, that is when bean is considered to be equivalent to a dollar. The utilization of the USDC ETH pool actually enables Beanstalk to minimize exposure to the centralized operators of USDC. And the utilization of time-weighted average price increases the cost of price manipulation. Now, the next part is the silo, which is the decentralized governance mechanism, or you can refer to it as Beanstalk's DAO. This actually offers passive yield to bean owners. So bean and LP tokens can be deposited into the silo to earn stock and seeds. The thing is that users who deposit LP tokens receive twice as many seeds per bean deposited compared to the bean depositors. And lastly, you have the field, which is the decentralized credit facility of the protocol, essentially the lending arm of the protocol. 
So anytime Beanstalk is willing to issue debt, you will see soil in the field. So soil, as I mentioned, is the protocol's willingness to issue debt. So beans that are not in the silo can be lent to Beanstalk in exchange for pods. And pods, as I mentioned, are the native debt asset of the protocol. Pods ripen and become harvestable, that is they become redeemable for one bean on a FIFO, that is a first in first out basis. Okay, so now let's see how Beanstalk actually maintains the pair. So Beanstalk actually relies on its decentralized community that includes the depositors, those are the silo members, the lenders are referred to as bean farmers on the protocol and you have the arbitragers. So what Beanstalk does is at the beginning of each season it evaluates the Beanstalk Oracle price and the debt level and then dynamically adjusts the bean supply, soil supply and weather which is the interest rate. So when the price of bean is below a dollar, it increases the soil supply, raises the weather to incentivize the issuance of debt in order to bring bean back to its peg. And when the bean price is too high, it increases the bean supply as in new beans are minted, lowers the weather so that it doesn't make sense for you to lend to the protocol and by doing so, Beanstalk is able to bring the bean price back to its peg. So to align the interests of bean farmers and silo members, that is the lenders and the depositors, half of the bean supply when these new beans are minted, right, goes to the pod harvests, that is to repay the debt. And the other half is distributed to the stockholders and it's deposited in the silo. And what Beanstalk does is, in order to prevent inorganic growth if the price of bean is too high and the debt level is excessively low for 24 consecutive seasons that is 24 consecutive hours beanstalk sells the beans directly on uniswap to return the price to the one dollar peg so that's how bean is able to create stability through its novel pet mechanism and the three interconnected parts contribute to this so that's the decentralized price oracle, the silo, and the field. Okay, so that's it for the working of the protocol. Now I'm gonna talk about how you can make money on it. So I think by now it's become pretty clear that there are only two ways in which you can profit from the protocol. The first way is by buying equity, that is the stock you can state in the silo, and the other is by lending to the protocol, that is buying debt in the form of pods from the field. The choice is yours, but I just want to point out a couple of things. So by depositing beans in the silo, that is when you choose to be a silo member, you earn a passive interest with no action required from you. The beans that you deposit will earn you stock and seed. Withdrawals are simple with the assets being frozen only for a day, that is 24 seasons, I had mentioned that. Now sowing beans in the field, that is when you choose to be a bean farmer, will earn you pods that are harvestable on a FIFO basis. That is, the sooner you decide to jump on board, the sooner you will be paid out. But the thing with this setup is that your return is guaranteed and it's based on the weather at the time you choose to lend to the protocol. However, the time of your return is not defined. So essentially, you have the option of staying liquid by depositing beans in the silo or you can opt for a much higher rate of return by choosing to sow beans in the field with the risk of being illiquid for an undefined period of time. Okay guys, I quickly want to show you the bean.money interface. The farm here, you have the silo. You can check the TVL, the field through which you lend to the protocol, available soil, weather, whether is the interest rate, you can buy and sell beans by clicking on trade. By clicking on market, you can buy and sell pods. And the DAO from where you would on the future of bean stock. That's all I've got for you for today. And that's a basic overview of the protocol. I know it's a lot of information to process, but hopefully you've got a decent understanding of the protocol. And if you're interested in knowing more, I'm going to drop a link to their white paper so you can actually read the nitty gritties and go through the math mentioned. I'll see you another time with another video. Take care. Bye.